This program is rated PG. The following program deals with mature subject matter and contains scenes with sexuality. Viewer discretion is advised. Charity, how are you feeling? Oh, I feel fine, Mr. Bennett. You know, I wish you'd call me Uncle Hank. My brother Sam is married to your Aunt Grace. Okay, Uncle Hank. That's better. <laughs> what are you working on, Whitney? Oh, I'm um, getting some research from the internet for my term paper. You know, I keep hearing about the internet at school, and everybody's talking about it, but I don't really know what it is. At least I don't remember if I do. Oh, well, it is amazing. I mean, it is a big help, especially when you're researching stuff for school. Mm -hmm. Here, why don't you sit down? I'll show you some stuff. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Can I get you something to drink? They got really good strawberry smoothies here. Yeah, that would be great. All right. I don't like this, Simone. Not one bit. Ever since that fiasco at the Halloween dance when Charity danced all night with Miguel, she doesn't seem to be afraid of him anymore. No, she doesn't. I guess that tape you made to make her afraid of Miguel wore off. I think it's time to think of a new way to keep Charity and Miguel apart and quick. What is it now, Mr. Crane? Well, I haven't had a chance to, to run this by Ethan yet, but I'm hoping he'll become more involved with the family responsibilities here in Harmony. I'd like that. I, uh, I'm just not sure where I'll be living. If you're referring to your mother's foolish idea about you rushing off to Washington, there'll be plenty of time for that. I want to make you the new liaison between the police department and Crane Industries. You've never mentioned that. Well, it just came to me. Uh, basically, it entails your sitting on the police board and being Chief Bennett's direct tie to anything having to do with the Crane family or our interests. What do you say? Well, sounds fine with me. Chief Bennett? Ethan strikes me as a young man with integrity and honor. You must be very proud to have such a fine young son, Julian. Yes, I am. Well, I have no problem with the idea. Excellent. So why don't you two go over exactly what Ethan's role is going to be? After all, you'll be working closely together from now on. <laughs> what the Mom? hell? Mother? Are you all right? Julian, I don't know. What do you think happened? He's faint? Mother? She doesn't seem to be hurt. Is there some place we can take him? Uh, the library. Let's get it. Okay. What seems to be the matter with her? I think she fainted. Fainted? Where? I've been known my wife to faint. What on earth would make Ivy faint? Ethan? He's not here, Sheridan. I think he's downstairs. Oh, thank you, Pilar. Sheridan, wait. I want to thank you for making sure that Luis didn't see that photograph in the newspaper of Ethan and Teresa at the ballet. He would have been very angry. I know. Although I didn't exactly score brownie points when I dumped hot coffee on his newspaper and him. Oh, no. <laughs> it's the only thing that I could think of spur of the moment. Uh, the problem is, is that Luis knew I did it deliberately. Are you sure? He had every right to be furious. I mean, I did do it deliberately, though naturally I couldn't tell him why. I, I don't like keeping things from Luis. He's a good son and a wonderful brother, but I know sometimes he can be a little overprotective. Especially when it means keeping his family away from the horrible cranes. I'm sorry, Sheridan. But you know I don't share his feelings. Your family's been very good to me. Then why does your son hate us so much? I can't speak for Luis. I'm just so relieved he doesn't know about Ethan and Teresa being out together that night, or that she's working for Mrs. Crane. I don't want to think what he would do if he found her in this house. Actually, he almost did. What? Luis was here? When? Why? Just now. He was on some police business, but that's not important. Well, tell me what happened. I was coming through the front door, and Teresa was heading down the stairs. Luis was on the floor. Oh, then he saw her? Oh, no, no, no. I distracted him until she could hide. Oh, thank you, Sheridan. But where's Teresa now? I mean, maybe he could still see her. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm sure she's long gone by now. Oh, my God. Luis. Teresa, what the hell are you doing here?
yourself the one who could sing so sweet And I would fly on the wings of the bird I knew could take me high as breathe in, breathe out You keep me alive You are the fire burning inside of me You are my passion for life and then you just click right here, and the search engine will find sites containing whatever information you're looking for. Amazing. I have so much to learn. It must be really frustrating not remembering things, huh? Yeah, it is. Well, once you learn how to use it, you'll absolutely love it. I mean, there are so many fun things you can do on it. You can even play games. Mmm. <laughs> uh, like Space Smashers? <laughs> yeah? How'd you know about that? <laughs> Miguel taught me how to play. Really? That's great. You know, I know things have been kind of uneasy between you and Miguel. Has that gotten any better? Actually, he's been really nice to me lately. I can't imagine why I was so scared of him before. But I don't feel that way anymore. Not so much, anyway. He's a really nice guy. Yeah, I believe you. Everyone's told me that we were really close. You were. And I'm sure it won't be long before you remember how you felt about him. Over my dead body. So, how are you and Charity doing, huh? Better, I guess. I mean, we had a really great night at the Halloween dance. But, uh, she didn't even know she was dancing with me because we were wearing costumes with masks on. Well, she seems more relaxed around you today and your ugly mugs right out there in the open. <laughs> yeah, she does seem a little more relaxed around me today. Well, just give her some time, man. You know, I'll be patient. She'll remember who you are and what you mean to each other eventually. I hope so. I don't believe this, Simone. Even my own uncle is rooting for Charity and Miguel to be together. Why is everyone against me? Okay, I know you don't want to hear this, but maybe it's time to give up on Miguel. No way. You can find someone else to love. I don't want anyone else, Simone. I've been in love with Miguel for years, way before Charity came into the picture. But Miguel never loved you back. Not even before Charity showed up. Well, he would have. He just got distracted by Charity. You don't know that, Kay. Yes, I do. Simone, are you gonna give up on Chad just because your parents don't approve of him? No. Then don't ask me to give up on Miguel. He's my first love. A woman never forgets her first love. What do you think of that? You gonna be all right? Yeah, she'll be fine. Father, why don't you go get some ice? Oh, ice, yes. Go, anything else? Just go get the ice. I'll go get some brandy. Sam, you wanna stay here and watch my mother? Of course. Ivy. Ivy, can you hear me? It's Sam. Ivy, are you all right? I'm so glad you're here. I love you so much. I know what you're doing here, Teresa. It's not what you think, Luke. You have been lying to me all this time, telling me that you were over for Ethan Crane, that you stopped fantasizing about that jerk. But you haven't, have you? Ethan is why you are here. You were snooping around, hoping to catch a glimpse of him, weren't you? Maybe talk to him? No, Louise. I have told you over and over to stay away from the Crane family, haven't I? He is a... No, but you didn't listen, did you? You just kept on with your ridiculous dreams. And now I catch you sneaking around here trying to catch a glimpse of him? What is wrong with you, Teresa? Haven't I warned you what could happen if you went near the Cranes? Nothing will happen. Look, Look what happened to Papa. You have no proof the Cranes had anything to do with Papa's disappearance. Maybe not yet, but I will. They're cruel and they're dangerous. They use people like us and then throw them away. I will not stand back and let that happen to you or anyone else in our family again. And you disobeyed my orders to stay away from the cranes, from this house. And you leave me no choice but to follow through on my threat. Your threat? Oh, Louise, no, please, no, I can and I will. No. You're going away to a convent school far away from this town. So you will never come in contact with any crane again. No, 
please, please, don't do this. Look, this is for your own good, Teresa. You're going away to a convent school as soon as I can make the arrangements. I probably should have done this a long time ago, but I stupidly believed you when you said you'd stay away from the cranes. I can't leave Harmony. I can't leave my friends, and I can't leave Mama. Well, you should have thought of that before you disobeyed my orders to stay away from this house. Oh, excuse me. I didn't know anyone was out here. You must be Pilar's daughter, Teresa. Yes. I'm Sheridan Crane. I wanted to thank you for bringing him by my blouse today. Your blouse? Yes. I wanted to wear it tonight, but I didn't realize that Pilar had taken it home to be mended. It was very sweet of your sister to bring it by here for me. Wait a minute. That's what you're doing here? You came to deliver a blouse for Mama? That's what Miss Crane <laughs> just said. I'm sorry I flew off the handle like that, Teresa. Just the scene you here in this house. God, I shouldn't have jumped to conclusions. Well, that just seems to be your modus operandi, doesn't it, officer? It's just that I've had a really bad day. I had a run-in with Julian Crane, for starters, and so when I saw you here, I just blew. Look, I should have known when you gave me your word never to come here that you wouldn't break it. I'm sorry, Teresa. It's okay, Louise. I understand. But uh, I'm going to be late for school if I don't go now. Excuse me. Go ahead. Okay. Nice to meet you, Miss Crane. You were pretty hard on your sister, weren't you? Oh, this is none of your business. Yes, it is, since you're using my family's name as an excuse to yell at your poor sister. Look, I love my sister, and I'm just trying to protect her. You had no right to eavesdrop. Oh, I hardly heard anything at all. But it was enough to make me realize once again how much you hate the Cranes. Why? What have we ever done to you? Like your family would ever admit anything. Admit what? What is it you think my family has done? I demand to know. Oh. What happened? We're having such a lovely picnic. Picnic? Oh, did I fall off my horse? The horses are loose. Do you run away? No. They're happy grazing until we finish our lunch. Want some more wine? No. Nothing for me. Thank you for a wonderful afternoon, Sam. I can't remember when I've been this happy. I always want to make you happy. As long as we're together, I always will be. Ivy, you're remembering something that happened years ago. Oh, don't be silly, sweetheart. Our picnic was this afternoon. Ivy, you've got to be quiet. My father? He's right here. <gasps> Ivy, listen to me. Julian is coming, and he doesn't know anything about us. You have to be quiet. Julian? Your husband. He's coming with your son. My husband, my son, what are you talking Shh. about? How's she doing? Oh, she's conscious. Oh, well, good. Then there's no need to call a doctor. Yeah, I think she'll be all right. Oh, oh please don't leave, Sam. Hey, where'd Whitney go? Um, back to school for last period, I think. I'm gonna go home. So, oh, no, no, you can't go now. You have to help me think of a way to keep Charity from monopolizing Miguel. I don't think that's possible. Besides, Cherry looks like she's having a great time on the computer, even without Miguel. I know, but any second now, she's gonna start acting all helpless and using her amnesia to get Miguel's attention. Then what can we do to stop her? I don't know, but I do know that I'm not gonna leave Miguel and Charity alone for even one second. She could have some kind of memory breakthrough, and that's the last thing I need. I can see that it means a lot to you for her to remember what she had together. It does, Hank. I mean, but at this point, she doesn't even remember her own mother. You know, maybe when she remembers her, she'll remember me too. I wonder what that means. I have never seen Louise so furious. So what happened? Sheridan came in and saved me again. She did? How? 
She convinced Elise that I was there on an errand for Mama, and he believed her. Thank goodness. Now you realize that you have to quit your job working for Ivy Crane, right? But it's the only way I'll ever get to see Ethan, be near him. For the last time, Teresa, Ethan loves Gwen. He is gonna marry her. There's nothing you can do about it. You shouldn't even try. I can't believe Ethan would ever marry Gwen. You have got to get it through your head, Teresa. You and Ethan are not meant to be together. Well, I want an answer, Luis. What has my family done to make you hate us so much? I've told you my feelings about your family. Oh, yes, 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 where it lead us to arrogant rich people. But that still doesn't explain why you would send your own sister away to a convent school just for being in this house. There's more to your hatred than that. It makes me sick to see the stranglehold that your family has on this town. And your brother and your father, they don't care about what they do or the people they hurt with their actions. How have they hurt people? Well, for one, they think they own this town and everything in it. You said that. And yes, the Cranes do own most of the businesses in Harmony. So what? Those businesses provide jobs. They help the economy. How does that hurt the people in Harmony? It's the way the Cranes treat people. The way you think you can get away with anything. Get away with what? You're not telling me anything specific. What makes you dislike my family yeah, so much? I'm not much? about to get into this with you. Or your brother. The only person I'm going to discuss it with is Alistair. My father? Yes. And I plan on having a meeting with him when he comes back into town. Why do you need to talk to my father? Goodbye, Miss Gray. Wait, I asked you... Oh, damn him! What in the world would Luis need to talk to my father about? Mother, you fainted on the stairs. Chief Bennett was helping you. Do you remember? Yes. Of course. Yes, of course I remember. Uh, thank you, Chief Bennett, for helping me. I'm, I'm afraid I'm still a little woozy. Father, hand me some of that ice. I'll make a compress. No, no, no. I don't need one. I'm well, fine. At least have some brandy. What happened, Ivy? Why did you faint? I, um... Uh... I was very busy this morning. I didn't have time to eat. I was feeling lightheaded, so I, I was on my way to the kitchen. Mother, you shouldn't go without food. Oh. I think she's all right now. Yes, I am fine now, Chief Bennett. Well, there's no sense letting this ice go to waste. May I fix anyone a drink? No, thanks, Father. No, uh, no thanks. I gotta get going. Uh, you don't mind if I use your phone before I leave? Oh, not at all. Uh, there's one in the foyer. Chief Bennett, wait a moment. I'll walk you out. You sure you're gonna be all right, Mother? We can still call a doctor. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm fine, sweetheart, really. <laughs> Don't scare us like that again. I'll try not to. <laughs> Goodbye, Chief Bennett. Goodbye, Mrs. Crane. I'm looking forward to working with you, Chief Bennett. Maybe we can get together for the police commission meeting and go over some things next week. Fine. All right. Somehow, some way, someone is going to pick up on your feelings for Chief Bennett. And what if that someone is Ethan? No. Ethan can't ever know. He can't even suspect, which is why I've changed my mind about Ethan settling in harmony. I suggested that he move to Washington, D.C. instead. Washington? It'll mean him starting his political career earlier than we planned, but so what? At least keep him away from harmony and Sam. Now that we're alone, would you like to tell me what that little melodrama was all about? I don't know what you mean, Julian. I mean, why did you faint? What's really going on here? I told you, I didn't eat today. Ivy, I've seen you play three sets of tennis before breakfast. Never once seen you keel over. What's really going on here? What aren't you telling me? Not everyone has hidden motives, Julian, unlike you. But you're hiding something from me, aren't you? 
<laughs> Don't be absurd. I've been acting rather odd lately. Rather distant and restless. Really, Julian, I've never known you to be suspicious. It's not very attractive. Oh. I'm so sorry. I wasn't aware that you found anything about me very attractive. I don't. But even less so when you're looking for things that aren't there. Tell me, Julian, what did Ethan mean when he said he'd be working with Chief Bennett? I've asked Ethan to take my place in the police commission. Why? For one thing, I don't think Sam Bennett and I are a good mix. He's a little too arrogant for my taste. <laughs> arrogant? Yes, he had the nerve to refuse when I demanded that he fire Louise. Why would you want Pilar's son fired? It involves Sheridan again. Uh, Louise seems to have a penchant for causing my sister trouble. And he's hot-tempered, and I think he'll eventually bring a lot of trouble to the Harmony Police Department. I see. And how did Sam react? He refused, of course. I was gonna fire him anyway until Sheridan stepped in. Sheridan? Yes. She threatened to go to the media, and she knows damn well my concern the family is that the press never uncover what she did that night years ago. Yes, yes. Back to Ethan. Why did you give your seat on the police commission to Ethan? Aside from not wanting to deal with Sam Bennett, I want our son to become more involved in uh, local politics. And the seat on the commission will help him get to know how things work here in Harmony. But I told you I wanted him to go to Washington right away to begin his political career. No. Oh. I don't see any reason for him to rush into going to Washington. There'll be plenty of time for national politics once he's learned the ropes and he's spent some time running Crane Industries. Harmony's his home. It's where he it belongs, for now. Julian, I'm sorry. I do not agree with the any... The matter is settled, Ivy. The discussion is over. <laughs> but I Ethan don't... Ethan is a Crane. He's my son. He'll do as I say. Okay, honey. Yeah, I just couldn't stop thinking about what you said earlier. I am sorry I was so hard on you, but you've got to face reality before you get yourself in big trouble. I know what you said made sense, except for one thing. Don't you believe in destiny? Oh, do not start in on the fact that you and Ethan are destined to be together. But it's true, Whitney. I am more sure now than ever. Why? Because I dreamt it. Oh my God, that is so ridiculous. No, it's not. I had a dream that Ethan came to my house. And when I opened up the front door, he was standing right there. And when I asked why he was there, he said, because of you. Teresa, you cannot build your future on a dream, especially a dream that never happened. You wanted it to be true, Teresa. So you convinced yourself that you and Ethan were destined to be together, that you were meant to be married. It wasn't destiny. It was just a dream. Maybe you're right, Whitney. Maybe I'll never be with Ethan. Come on, let's go home. Here's that smoothie. Thanks. Charity, is something wrong? I'm not sure. What's going on, Miguel? I don't know. Has something happened, Charity? Uh, I just had this flash. I saw my Aunt Grace sitting at a computer, smiling at me. Has Charity seen your mom working on a computer, Kay? No, not that I know of. Wait a minute. Your mom worked on a computer, and she and Mrs. Bennett were identical twins. Maybe the person you had a memory of wasn't your Aunt Grace. Maybe it was your mother. Do you think so? I, I hope so. I mean, because you know what that could mean. You could be starting to get your memory back. And then you could remember us. Charity, when you were in the hospital, Dr. Russell said it would be a really good sign if you started to remember your mother. A sign that my memory might be coming back. Yes. I mean, this is fantastic. 
Yeah, it is. My mom's face was so sweet. She must have loved me so much. I wish I could remember more. You will, Charity. Miguel is right, Charity. You'll remember everything one of these days. But Dr. Russell said to take things slowly. Don't push yourself to remember too much too fast. Right, Simone? Yeah, I remember my mom saying something like that. Simone, why don't you take Charity to the ladies' room so she can put some cold water on her face? All right. Come on, Charity. Why'd you do that, Kay? Do what? Why'd you stop me from holding Charity? Oh, that man! What man? My father? No, although Julian drives me crazy, too. Then you must mean Luis. He's unbelievable. Well, what did he do now? He practically scared the life out of Teresa. Wait, he saw Teresa here? Just now. Oh, no, don't tell me he knows she was working for my mother. No, I was able to cover for her, said she was delivering a blouse for me. But I shudder to think what Luis would have done if he actually found out, though. I mean, he was ready to send her off to a convent school just for being in our house. No, I don't get it. I and mean, what is it with that guy? I don't know, but he really hates our family. No, but why? I mean, what do we ever do to him? I asked him the same question, and he was totally vague about it. You know, Pilar has worked for this family for as long as I can remember. I mean, we've always treated her well. Yes, but... I know that Luis absolutely hates her working here. And he just loses it when he thinks about Teresa or anyone else in his family getting anywhere near us. It's almost as though he thinks we're gonna do some irreparable harm to them. That's ridiculous. Why would we harm his family? I don't know. Unless... Unless what? Ethan, what if my father or Julian did do something to Luis and they weren't aware of it? Like what? I don't know. I, I just hope that our family isn't responsible for doing something terrible that we don't know about. No, I doubt it, Sheridan. <laughs> still, it's possible that something was done and Luis is still holding a grudge about it. And if our family is responsible for doing some terrible injustice, then we need to make it up to Luis. Make it up to Luis? <laughs> I thought you were, like, dying to get out from underneath his thumb. <laughs> I can't wait to get through with my community service. But if the Cranes are responsible for doing something to Luis, then we need to make amends. <laughs> You're wonderful, Sheridan. <laughs> but I'm sure there's no amends that we have to make. Nothing at all. No way, Julian Crane tried to get you fired? Did my brother go for it? No, Sam stood his ground. As much as I hate to admit it, Sam wasn't the only one who stood up to Julian in my defense. Who else? Sheridan Crane. You're kidding me. No, she got Julian to back down. I told you she was nice. Yeah, you know, there's nothing nice about any of the Cranes. I'm sick of the way they think they rule this town and everyone in it. I'm not intimidated by them. Well, it does seem like Julian Crane has it in for you. I wonder why. Well, maybe he's worried that I'll find out what his father did all those years ago. Alistair Crane? I'm sure the old man had something to do with my father's disappearance. And he covered it up. Yeah, well, you've told me that before. But you don't have any proof. No, not yet. But I intend to get to the bottom of it when Alistair comes back to Harmony. Oh, Luis, you're just asking for trouble, buddy. You know, just be grateful that Sheridan smoothed things out for you and leave it at that. Are you nuts? If Sheridan was the cause of the problem in the first place. Well, if her name wasn't Crane, you would probably be thanking her for helping you out. If her name wasn't Crane, this problem wouldn't exist. Okay, fine. I, I, you know, I just can't fight with you when you get something in your bull head. Okay. I should probably be glad that you feel this way about her. Well, what's that supposed to mean? That if you didn't have a grudge against the Cranes, you probably would have made a move on her by now. <laughs> Not a chance. Yeah, well, Sheridan's beautiful, and she's smart, and she's fun. She's just your type. Hardly. I like a woman with warm blood in her veins, not ice water. Oh, man. You are so wrong. It's what's inside a woman that makes her beautiful. There's nothing inside Sheridan but a massive crane ego. Okay, fine. I'm glad not to have the competition. I think she's pretty special. I've warned you about her, Hank. Be careful. Well, don't worry about me. 
Fine. I've wasted enough time today talking about the cranes already. I gotta go home and apologize to Teresa about something. Do you mind if I come along? Watching you grovel would just make my day. What, is that a yeah or a no? I have nothing to live for. My life is over. Your life is not over, Teresa. I know it's painful, but you will get through this. Never. All I ever wanted was to be Ethan Crane's wife. And now that may never happen. You, you can't say may never, Teresa. It's never. That is just so hard for me to accept, Whitney. I wanted to believe my dream so badly. I, I jumped to all kinds of conclusions. I had myself convinced it was real. I know. I ignored the fact that Ethan came to my house to see my mother. All I could think of was he was there, just like in my dream. What a fool I am. I guess love does make you blind sometimes. It does. It makes you lose all your common sense. Well, if you ask me, it is just a big waste of time. I hope that I never fall so much in love that I can't even think straight. You will. You wait and see. <laughs> like I said, I hope not. But now you see the reality of the situation, don't you? Tell me you're going to give up your dream of being with Ethan. Tell me you're going to let Ethan and Gwen live their lives, and you're going to live yours. Can you do that? <sighs> I heard you fainted, Mrs. Crane. Are you all right? No, Pilar, I am not all right. Julian has given his seat on the police commission to Ethan. Now Ethan and Sam are going to be spending a great deal of time together. You can't allow that to happen. There's nothing I can do. Julian is adamant about it. All these years, I have avoided Sam. I made sure that Ethan was away at school and spent no time in harmony to avoid the very thing that's happening now. I know how much you've sacrificed and how painful this has been for you. Pilar. You have no idea how I felt the first time Sam came to this house as police chief. Seeing him again after all these years. You mustn't think about Sam. You have to put the past behind you. Don't you think I've tried? And now Sam and Ethan will be spending a great deal of time together. And I am so afraid the truth will come out. You can't let that happen. It's too late. It's too late. There's only one thing I can do. I have to... I have to tell Sam myself. No, you mustn't say anything to him. It's the only thing to do, Pilar. I hope he hasn't left. You're making a terrible mistake. Kay, why did you try to stop me from comforting Charity? I... she was upset, Miguel. Uh, yeah, I could see that. That's why I thought I could help her. Well, she's still a little bit afraid of you. I mean, she, she could have freaked out. Is that what you want? No, of course not. I mean, but I thought she was feeling more comfortable around me. I mean, we got along so well at the dance. But that's because she didn't know she was dancing with you. I'm really sorry, Miguel, but what I was doing was for your own good. You really think she would have freaked out? She could have. I mean, Charity's a very shy girl. You have to take things extra slow with her. Yeah, I guess you're right. Charity, you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. You know, I was just thinking about my mom, and it just makes me kind of sad. I understand. Miguel, I was wondering. My mom used to work on computers, so I probably did, too. Yeah, you probably did. I remember when you and your mom were going to leave town, we talked about keeping in touch with email. I mean, it's a way of sending messages on a computer. So I probably knew a little bit about computers. Probably. Well, I had this idea. Um, maybe if I start a journal on a computer, you know, like a diary, and I write my thoughts and feelings in it every day, I would start to remember more things. That's a great idea, Charity. What do you think, Kay? Oh, yeah, it's a great idea. Good. I can't wait to get started. This is the best thing that could have happened. I mean, if Charity works on this journal, and she starts to remember more about her mother, then maybe she'll remember us and what we meant to each other.
There you are, Flora. Mr. Crane, I'll be finished here in a moment. Oh, no, take your time. I... I'd like to talk with you about something. With me, sir? Mm. You're close to my wife. And I know she thinks of you as a confidant. What's going on with Mrs. Crane these days? Going on, Mr. Crane? Yeah, she doesn't seem herself lately. She's behaving erratically, sort of out of character, haven't you noticed? No, she seems the same to me. I oh. hope oh, Chief Bennett's still here. I forgot to tell him something. Oh, no. What if Ivy's out there with Sam? Sam, wait. What is it, Mrs. Crane? We have to talk. I don't think that's a very good idea. I have to tell you something, and it's really important. Sir Teresa's home from school by now. Yeah, well, she's probably hiding under a bed. If I had you for a brother, that's where I'd be. Come on, Hank, I made a mistake, and I'm going to tell her I'm sorry. It's just when I saw her at the Crane Mansion, I went a little crazy. I feel terrible. Well, you should. Don't make me feel worse, all right? I'll find a way to make it up to her. Uh, at least I know she still isn't thinking about Ethan Crane. She wouldn't do that to me. Can you imagine if Ethan ever became your brother-in-law? Don't even joke about it, Hank. If Ethan ever touched her or came within 100 feet of her, I'd kill him. Teresa, answer me. Tell me that you are going to give up on the idea that you and Ethan were meant to be together. Uh, I guess so. Do, do you really mean that, Teresa? Because you know you have said that before, and something has always happened to make you get right back on that Ethan track again. No. I mean it, Whitney. I know Ethan and I can never be together. It's over. Finally. Hey, Teresa. I'm here because of you. <laughs> What'd you just say? I said I'm here because of you. <laughs> 